Hey, before we get to today's episode, I want to make a very special announcement regarding the future of the Orange is Orange or Browns podcast. Holly Wetzel will be joining the team this summer as a host and will continue with us through the NFL season. She's going to help carry some hosting duties for me due to the growth of the network. Holly is bringing her many years in Cleveland media to press play, and we cannot be more thrilled. We're recording with an episode with her next week, and if you're not familiar with her work, I can't wait for you to meet her and also don't miss out on all the other happenings at press play podcast our incredible sports talk lineup which features dennis maniloff kenny rhoda and michael red guy with rnr sim amico talking Cavs, and jeff didoff talking fantasy football we have up next to cover all your streaming tv shows and movies and our newest show producing while asian highlights asian american pacific islanders and other minorities in the entertainment industry and business and launching next week, yes, another another exciting announcement. Launching next week, I want to introduce you to a brand new show on the Press Play Podcast Network, The Ball Card Show. Do you like collecting cards, watching box breaks on Instagram? Do you want to know what's going on in the ball card industry? Then check out this show, The Ball Card Show. Here are hosts Jason Otero and Gary the Masters to tell you more about The Ball Card Show. Hello and welcome to the Ball Card Show, the sports podcast for the sports collector. I'm Jason. And I'm Gary. And we are so excited for you to join us on this journey from the nostalgia of a childhood hobby all the way through the excitement of the current sports card and collectibles market. You know, Jason, as a kid, I will never forget the first big collection that I ever put together, Fernando Valenzuela rookie cards. As a matter of fact, I distinctly remember trading a Pete Rose rookie that my grandfather had given me for a whole stack of 1981 Tops Fernandos. I wish I could take that one back. <laughs> I bet you do. You know, for me as a kid, I'll never forget 1992 Tops Baseball, Eric Davis, gold chain glistening in the sun. I had never seen so much swag on a baseball diamond. And I dare say, Gary, I probably never will again. But one thing's for sure, I was convinced this is one of the all-time greats, and I never stopped collecting him. To this day, he's still in my PC. And for all of us, we have some moment we remember. Whether we've been in this for a long time or just getting started, there's so much to this hobby for us to unpack. Everything from new product releases to grading to, to flipping to gambling, which has become a part of it as well. There is so much to talk about, and we can't wait to join this conversation with you. And whether you're a, a new person to the hobby who may have collected as a kid and have seen the excitement around it now and want to get back into it, you don't really know where to start, or whether you never stopped collecting, there's going to be something for you. The Ball Card Show, dropping May 20th as a part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Listen to us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Subscribe today to The Ball Card Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. In this episode, Jeremy and I are joined by ESPN Cleveland's Emmett Golden to talk about his career in radio and the Cleveland Browns. Emmett is truly the best and one of the most genuine people I've met. I can't wait to have him on again. Jim Donovan, take it away. 45-40, run, William, run! He's got blockers in front, five, touchdown! Joshua Crimp! He snapped back, ball down, can't block. block! They blocked the kick! This is the Orange is Orange or Browns podcast from the Press Play Podcast Network. I'm your host, Chase Smith, and with me, as always, he's our Browns insider, Jeremy Powell. Jeremy, it's June, man. That means we're closer to football season. What's up? Hey, yes, sir, Chase. And guess what? My son's team cooperated, so I got to come on on time to hear from one of my favorite guys in Cleveland media. I'm super excited for this. I've been trying to make it happen for a long time. Glad we got it going. Chase, why don't you introduce him? Here we go, and, and I'm going to start with this uh, kind of lead-in. He's the co-host of The Next Level with Emmett and Gerard on ESPN Cleveland. He's on the last hour of The Really Big Show, primetime on ESPN Radio. Jeremy Powell says he's the hardest-working man in show business. Emmett Golden, what's <laughs> up, Emmett? What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me, man. No, thank you. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, so what we like to do Emmett, is whenever we have people who, who join our show for the first time, especially if they're um, in the media uh, world already, just like, kind of like to ask – like your journey into journalism, how you got to where you are today. I know that you've uh, shared that a lot of times before. It's a really cool story. Would you mind just kind of telling us, man, how you got to be on the radio? Dude, that's super cool. 
Yeah, it's and it's weird too. You know, I um I came, you know, home after two years of college and I was lucky I got a job at American Greetings in their shipping and receiving department. It was a really good job. And um I was me and my friend were the youngest two people there. Everybody else was in their sixties and I was like, Oh man, it's perfect, right? Like I could work here and retire. Like this is gonna be great so worked there for about five or six years recession hit massive layoffs right Mm -hmm. and that was one of the people that got laid off so I bounced around doing anything anything that I could you know working in factories making plumbing equipment um you know was working at Dick's Sport selling treadmills and stuff like that I got a call back from American Greetings and I didn't realize it um at the time but it's actually something that has really benefited me um and you know in this career they're just like, hey, man, you know, um, we got a job available. And I was like, yeah, when should I come in and, um, and interview? And they're like, no, bro, it's like yours, you know, because we know you. You know, we know you. You're always around here. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, OK, great. So I was happy to finally, you know, have some secure and something regular. And after doing that for about two or three years, um, after one day having a conversation with my wife, she asked me, like, don't you want to have a career? Because by that time I was about 28 or so. And I'm so this like, this was 2007, 2008, 2008. Yeah. Okay. 2008, 2009 ish about like right on the turn. Yeah. And I was like, wow, like that's actually a, a good point, but I was actually just happy to have a job, you know, <laughs> like yeah. a consistent job. I had like my own cubicle and stuff. I was just grateful to have that, but she had a point. Um, and I, so I sat down and did some self-evaluation, like, what am I good at? And I'm like, well, I think I'm funny, but like, I think I'm funny. That doesn't mean other people think that I'm funny. So I'm like, what can you, you know, what can I do with that? You know, uh, probably nothing. And I'm like, I make friends pretty easy, but what job do you have where you make friends? I'm like, that's stupid. So I evidently I have no skills, right? (laughs) I don't know what I'm going to do. And I used to, (laughs) I used to listen to the Dan Patrick show all the time. And they had a guy, uh, Stephen O'Connor, on there. And um, he used to jump on and crack jokes once in a while. And I know he kind of ran the board and produced the show. And I said, man, that looks like a lot of fun. Like, I like I would love going to work if that's what my job was. Um, so I, you know, <laughs> I grew up listening to 850 because that was my dad's, you know, like favorite um, radio station. So, uh, you know, as I got older, I just kind of fell into those habits. And I um, heard the Ohio Center for Broadcasting at the time. It's Ohio Media School now commercial. And I said, you know what, like, I'm just going to go for it. You know, like, let's yeah. see what's going to happen. You know, I enrolled uh, there. And, you know, right from the jump, they gave me a rude awakening, said, hey, when you start, you're not barely going to make any money, you know, <laughs> don't walk in here thinking you're going to be rich, you know, as soon as you walk in, um, it's going to be a grind. But um, the biggest thing they did was help me get my foot in at uh, ESPN Cleveland as an intern. And I walked in 29 years old now when all the other interns were 20, 21, you know, uh, I was the old man. I had a family. I had a wife and two kids at the time. Um, and I just, I just bust my ass, you know, um, just did everything I could. Uh, whenever I got an opportunity, I made the most of it. I also, you know, just made sure everybody knew me, you know, I, I built relationships with everybody around the office just naturally. It's just something I, you know, I, I kind of naturally do. I like talking to people, you know, I, so um, I didn't realize that that's like that an actual skill until much, you know, later on in my career. But I did that. And, you know, you go to intern and you get hired part time, like, all right, you're going to run the board, you know, from eight to midnight or 1 a.m. every Sunday. Uh, and I begged for the chance to cover Cleveland State basketball. And they're like, yeah, you know, at the time, <laughs> nobody else wanted to do it. So they're like, yeah, go ahead. Like, we don't care. And I made the most of that, you know, and then it just kind of progressed over time going from, you know, part time board op to, you know, full timer doing the afternoon drive show. I found out I was just a terrible producer. Like I just (laughs) I know how to produce content and create content. I'm just not um, I'm not good at at structure and schedules. And, you know, like I just I'm terrible at it. So I kind of failed from that point. But, you know, I had people in our um, in our company that was like, hey, maybe we ought to just, you know, get this guy a microphone and, you know, just kind of let let it happen, man. So, that I mean, the rest, you know, is kind of history, as they say. But, yeah, I mean, it's been a grind, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. 
Is there a moment, just like a singular moment, where you're like, man, I cannot believe this is my job? Like a, a guy you met, a Simon you got? Is there, was there a, a specific moment you can point to that you're like, well, I can't believe this? It actually happens on a regular basis. There's not one, <laughs> not one moment, honestly. I remember it probably was a few years ago. You know, I've been doing this like 11 years, so maybe this was four or five years ago. I was driving in to work. And I heard myself on a commercial, heard myself on a commercial a bunch of times before. But one day it hit me and I just was like, wow, like I'm <laughs> doing commercials, you know, <laughs> like this is insane. Like this is crazy that um, like that this is my job. Like I listen to so much sports radio reluctantly because I wasn't a fan of it growing up. My dad was and never would I have thought, you know, that I would have that opportunity. And I mean, then there's other moments like being at game seven of the 2016 <laughs> finals, you know, uh, being in the locker room and watching those guys celebrate and, you know, having my shoes covered in champagne and, you know, <laughs> yeah. all of that is, is super surreal, you know, and I'll never forget it, but yeah, um, I'm not jealous at all. I man. do my best to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, I mean, being at the world series, like I've been a, extremely fortunate yeah. and blessed to cover a lot of good things i mean you know interviewing mark price a guy that i looked mm. up to and wanted to be growing up there's so many moments and i do my best to make sure that happens often right because you know yeah. i i know through my fault or maybe not that one day it, it could all be gone so i just yeah. kind of appreciate each moment you know when it when they come now now emmett you said you've been there for about 11 years and all that kind of culminated this March when you announced that you were named an African-American future leader in radio by Radio Inc. Mm -hmm. Magazine. What did it mean to you to just be recognized? I mean, that's an incredible honor, man. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. It was something that I didn't expect, um, but some I take a lot of pride in and humble mm -hmm. by too, you know? Um, so, you know, I've been involved in some things with Good Karma. You know, they, they kind of launched the first all African-American radio station in uh, Milwaukee, um, 107 won the truth and you know I was kind of part of that you know kind of helping that That's thing awesome. come together and even the fact that the company would come to me and ask for my opinion you know and say hey this is what we're doing and we'd love for you to be a part of it uh humbled man that's really you know all i could say i just try to do my you know i try to do my best to be myself and to be transparent and most people that know me even if if i say something they disagree with they know it's coming from a good place like i'm never trying to be a butthead or no, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, disrespectful yeah to anybody so the fact that anyone would view me as any sort of leader but let alone you know a leader mm -hmm. in the african-american community community uh, uh fortunate and it's something i don't take lightly you know i appreciate it and i feel a responsibility you know uh, that comes with that well well deserved i uh covered a game with sam amico a couple years ago um and i don't know if you remember i've only been to one with sam but you you there were a couple people who worked the game that just kind of kept to themselves and and did their thing and but you, you were very kind and you know we didn't yap it up i didn't yap it up with anyone but you were just very like mm -hmm. hey how you doing and it, it was just like it when i saw you had that honor i was like yeah man that, that really checks out you're, you're great in the mic and you seem like a real dude um so uh yeah, thanks man yeah. I, I don't sh i don't shut up you know that's really <laughs> and what it comes down to <laughs> there's no doubt and this is what i was telling chase beforehand is i met you courtside of the cat couple of Cavs games actually and you did you just chopped up you didn't know me from anybody and then we became friends mm -hmm. you know through tw on twitter and stuff through that wait but it wait just wait seems like you didn't know jeremy and akron he probably he probably did let's be honest <laughs> well, I, I was surprised I listen i was surprised you didn't put me on that reel of highlights of his career meeting jeremy and akron outside of the Cavs game right <laughs> look, look i knew the brand right yeah, i knew right? the brand jeremy and akron but i didn't know you know i didn't know the face that went with the brand right um, but it was and you know and just yeah, and that's one of the that's and, yeah that's one of the moments though that i knew like how much I liked you because you were just on the off the air. You were like how you are on the air. You're just a real mm -hmm. dude. You were cool to talk to. You took time. You didn't know me. You took time. We actually talked for quite a bit before that game. And it was just a, it was a cool moment. And you, and you, and it shows on the air, Evan, it shows on the air that you love what you do, that you care about what you do. Cause you can't fake sincerity. You know, you can't right. fake passion and it's obvious that you have it. And I think that's why I like you so much. And I think that's why kind of Cleveland's embraced you so much is just that, that passion that you have for the game. I appreciate that, uh, Jeremy. I, I remember uh, Mike Goldstein was someone that used to be our like operations manager. And one day he told me, he's like, you know, Emmett, you're the same guy off the air as you all are as you are on. And he said, that's not normal. You know, it's 
like most people turn on and they become not completely different, you know, because I've been around it, um, you know, but it, it is more of a performance a lot of times when guys, you know, crack a microphone because you got to entertain. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's your job. Um, and when he told me that, I was like, really? Like, I thought everybody was kind of <laughs> the same, yeah. you know. Then I met, like, Stephen A. Smith, and I just seen him, like, real quiet and not saying much. And then he turned on the microphone and boom. You know, he's being who he is, but he's not always 24 hours that way. I'm kind of the same dude all the time. Yeah. Uh, hey, we have a ton to talk about. We're talking about Browns. We could spend time talking about the Cavs. Probably won't talk much about them, Indians. But before we, we do take a break, Emmett, your career has has spanned this really interesting time on the internet with the rise of social media, and and now through this whole how radio and media is changing with podcasting. Uh, how is it being in radio with now everyone having an opinion and everyone having a platform? And like, how has that changed? Uh, I mean, it's it's not bad because to me, it just means, you know, there are more avenues. Right. Mm. Um, like I said, I <laughs> I don't walk around worried about losing my job, but I know it's possible. And if I do, then I know like there are other avenues. I don't have to just worry about other radio stations or stuff like that, mm. that I can go the podcast route or anything um, of that nature. So it's all good, man. I mean, if anybody is passionate about something and they want to get their voice out there, like and do it, I would urge anybody uh, to do it. It's sometimes it's therapeutic, you know, no. yeah, <laughs> I get it. it just feels yeah. good, yeah. you know, to get a bunch of stuff off your chest. So, um, so I think it's good. You know, I, I'm, I'm happy for everybody that does it and I, I'm rooting for everyone. Great. Well, hey, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Cleveland Browns and that's probably it because, Hey, let's talk about the Browns. All right, we'll be right back. Yeah. Hello. Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Books like Stephen King's The Shining or Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. If you're on the hunt for book recommendations and enjoy sparkling conversation, come read along with us and then listen in. Hey everybody, it's Sam Amico from Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. Be sure to give us a listen for all your Cleveland Cavaliers recaps, analysis, breakdowns, draft talk, free agency. The list goes on and on. Give us a listen, Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. Hey there, this is Brent Spillant, co-host of a Swingin' a Tribe MLB podcast. Listen, we're just a couple of fans who love to talk everything Cleveland Indians baseball. If you're a fan like us, then this is the podcast for you. Go Tribe. Hi, my name is Sam Post, owner of Phenomwell CBD Store and PhenomwellCBD.com. That's like phenomenal, PhenomwellCBD.com. Tune in where we talk with experts about how the amazing hemp plant can make a difference for people's health and well-being from the Press Play Podcast Network. Hey, it's Tito, host of the Premier Fantasy Podcast. Get all the news and analysis you need to dominate your fantasy league. I've been doing this as long as anybody in the business. I can help give you the edge in your leagues. It's the Premier Fantasy Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. For the Dennis Maniloff Show, I'll tap into my 40-plus years of following Cleveland sports and 30-plus years of writing and talking about them so as to bring you informed opinions and analysis of your favorite players and teams. I also will monitor the national sports scene and when warranted, step out of the toy department and into the real world. And I'll always be on the lookout for special guests. By all means, join us. Want to hear more about your favorite TV shows and movies that are on countless streaming services? Then listen to Up Next with your new favorite hosts, me, Kristen Aviles. And me, Christina Walter. Every other week, we'll highlight one genre, but two movies or TV shows, one old and one new. We'll let you know what's hot and what's not from your favorite or least favorite streaming services. And be sure to stay tuned to the end of each episode where we shout out an artist whose name you should know for their talent in the industry. So follow us to stay up to date with your favorite hosts from Up Next, a part of the Press Play Podcast Network. <laughs> You've been pining, you've been waiting for Rega and Rhoda to get back together. We got you. Press Play Podcast. We're ready to go. We're going to have our podcast with everything that you want. 
Browns, Cavaliers, Indians, Ohio State, the National Scene, Kenny Rhoda, Michael Regai back together again. Make sure you keep your ears open. It's happening right here on Press Play Podcast. See you then. Hey, it's JD from the Hyman Podcast. I created this podcast to have hard conversations. Conversations that make us human but are also wildly uncomfortable. Conversations that help give voice to the voiceless and to the marginalized. Now you can listen to the entire first season on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Consider this your personal invitation to join the conversation. We're back. The Orange is Orange and Browns podcast part of the Press Play Podcast Network with Emmett Golden. Emmett, let's talk about the Browns. They've had let's quite an offseason. Oh, dude, that, that hat is fresh, man. <laughs> I'll say this. The Browns, they don't have a lot of great hats sometimes. But w- and when you find that great hat, right. you just got to rock it. Dude, that looks good. Oh, that the, looks good. The, it's, my, it's one of my favorite hats, the Brownie the Elf hat. Uh, it's yeah. amazing. And I saw it at the store. I couldn't <laughs> leave it there. Yeah, yeah. So, Emmett, <laughs> what has gotten you most excited about the Browns? Their free agency uh, pickups, their draft, or the schedule outlook? Because I feel like all of them are very exciting in a very different way. Um, really, I guess all of them <laughs> are none of them, because really, for me, it's the fact that Kevin Stefanski is their head coach. Yep. Um, it is so important, you know, to have a, a strong leader and he's smart and he doesn't have an ego. And that's hard to find, um, especially in sports. And that's the difference. I know they got a bunch of great players and that's all good. But we saw a couple of years ago, you can have a bunch of great players. But if, you know, the, the guy driving is a little shaky. You might not get to your destination, but, uh, you know, you can count on Kevin Stefanski. So that's what has me most excited about the Browns. You know, I realize <laughs> like so you could have all the talent in the world, but if you don't have someone leading that talent, then you might as well not have any. So it was Kevin Stefanski that, that has me more excited than anything else. I love it. Jeremy, as we kind of turn to really – I, I guess OTAs a little bit, but really the next big thing is training camp. As this off season is kind of in, into f- clear focus, which of those has gotten you the most excited for agency draft or kind of like our schedule and the upcoming season? You know, E. Goldie, Emmett, sorry, E. Goldie, <laughs> E. Goldie, no, my guy, Emmett. Okay, it's yeah. just crazy. I'm sitting here talking to you. I don't know. Do I say E. Goldie like I say normally, Emmett? No, but hey, I'll, Emmett I'll hit it right on the either. head. <laughs> <laughs> Emmett hit it right on the head. I mean, it's the leadership aspect, right? You can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't have the talent in the right position, if you don't have the right system to fit your talent, it, it doesn't matter. We've seen that. As he said two years ago, it's, the, it's having a front office and a coach on the same page where we're speaking the same language, where it's cohesive, and it's just – it's so exciting. Now, the talent excites me too, obviously. Look, as I've heard Tony Grossi. I've heard Terry Pluto. I've heard all these guys that have covered the team for years say this is the most talented team they've ever seen. It's more talented than the teams of the 90. It's more talented than the cardiac kit kids teams there's no holes there's no holes on paper now we still have to get on the field and see it so I guess I'd say I'm excited for OTAs even just to see that a little bit on the field and then training camp but it's just the fact that we have talent and a system and strong leadership and a cohesive group that's on the same page which we have not had that literally in 20 some years by now we already had when Freddie took over we had already had stories at this point of him and Todd Monk and not getting along right we, that was already happening we haven't heard anything in two years out of Bria of the Browns not uh not being on the same page look we they brought back every single coach that's never happened in my lifetime the Browns brought back every single coach, every single position coach. Everybody is back. Everybody's obviously on the same page. There's no issues. They just went through, you know, Kevin Stefanski in his first year had the toughest year, arguably, in the history of the NFL with all the protocols and all the hoops he had to jump through. And the Jets game, losing players the night before, and still they looked like a cohesive unit at all times. They never looked like a team that didn't know what they were doing. So I think Emmett's right. I think it's Coach Stefanski, Barry, the whole front office that has me most excited. And then the talent on the field. Yeah, and, and I think because of their cohesiveness and the way that they attack the offensive and defensive side of the ball, you saw that trickle down through free agency, through the draft. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's what is exciting is, yes, it does start at the top. Um, and even though I know that, I still – I like – I like a good signing. I like a good, exciting. Oh, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it. I understand. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Stefanski and Barry, and I love all of that. And I love that we haven't heard the name Berea in two seasons. 
Um, but I think I get a little bit more excited about free agency because we know that those guys are proven and they can play, right? I think the draft, right, right. It, it's just so much of unknowns. Like we think they're good, but you, you just never know. But when you bring in guys like Troy Hill and, and, and JJ three, who are like definitive mm-hmm. studs at what they do. And they have filled a weakness that we had, even that linebacker, uh, Anthony Walker from the Colts. My I, guy. I think that's that is an, forever, un, yeah. like that is a under the radar sign. It's going to have huge dividends at least in the locker room for, for the Joker who's coming. Like, I just think the free agent, they absolutely killed free agency. And then I don't know who posted the Javon Clowney picture of him working out, Maybe. but it is yeah. just like terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was saying never that I think I'd see somebody and go, man, he's more swole than miles Garrett you know? <laughs> <laughs> because yes, he's I'm... right there, you know? Yep. Um, so yeah, that picture looked insane. My goodness. It, my it, goodness. It, yeah, you know what? Exactly. We got the two guys you want getting off the bus first in the entire league on our team. Clowney <laughs> and uh, Garrett walking off the bus right. first is what you, you know, is what you want. But yeah, it's just, it's just, and it was smart signings. And it was like we, we've talked about forever on Twitter, cap manipulation. The Browns manipulated the cap to where they still have a bunch of cap space. You know, what did they say? Jadavian's Clowney is like, contract's actually five years with four voidable years just to manipulate the cap because we have smart guys running the thing, running the system that know what they're doing. And they didn't go out and just sign guys. Everybody they signed, they knew fit a, a role that they wanted. Mm-hmm. And you look at a guy like Anthony Walker, a guy that I love, a guy that I talked about during the season. Look mm-hmm. how Darius Leonard, how upset was he yeah. that he was gone? That's his guy. It's a smart, tough, and accountable, right? Is that what the Browns said they wanted? Mm-hmm. And they went out and got smart, yep. tough, and accountable guys. And and that's why I actually, Evan, for the first time since we've been doing this show for, what, five years, I actually picked who we were going to draft in the first round. I nailed the draft pick. Why? Because that's a smart, tough, and accountable guy. He fit what they said, and the Browns are actually doing what they say they're going to do. I bet you didn't pick the second round one right, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I did him a great deal. Nobody saw the first... JOK. <laughs> that yeah. coming, nope. nope. And I was up there, and that was an electric moment, Chase. You talk about, you know, moments and how fun it is. That moment up there being out there when the Browns were on the clock and, and he and JOK was still on the clock, and everybody in that crowd wanted him, and then the Browns to pull the trigger and get him. That was, that was a fun, cool moment for sure. That was great. That was great. Emma, we got a few more minutes left with you. You got to talk about the Indians post game coming up here soon. So we're going to uh, let you leave. But, hey, there are 17 games this season in the NFL season. Mm-hmm. What – is the bottom what's the basement win number the browns need to hit in order for this to be a successful season um i mean to put a number on it uh yep. 10 wins you know i'd say 10 but you know what if they if they only win nine games and make it to the playoffs still like i don't care i want to mm-hmm. see them i expect them to win in the AFC North. I understand Mm -hmm. it's going to be tough with the Ravens, but um, after seeing everything they have and coach of the year coming back and all that, I expect them to win the AFC North. Um, But I'm also a realist and I know that injuries happen and there are different Mm -hmm. things. You never know what's coming your way. So ultimately you just want to get to the dance and if they can get in the playoffs again, I can, I can't help but see them making a deep run. So to answer your question, I'll say 10. Um, But, you know, I think I had my win total when I reluctantly played the schedule game because I hate the schedule game. I think I put them at 12 wins. (laughs) Yeah. We played it with the ladies and that's what B said a couple weeks ago. So I I think a better way to gauge the success of the season is how far they go in the playoffs. I think that's a little, I think that's a more accurate Mm way to gauge how they're right. going uh, jeremy you're uh you, you predicted that they would go 13 and 4 you, you yeah. still like that number i still like that yeah well nothing's happened since we did it right no i still like the number and <laughs> you know i think i agree with you though i think they have to win another playoff game for the year to be a success i think if they go and they get knocked out first round or divisional round i think then i then i think it is a disappointment so i think that for the to answer your question for the season to be a success i think they have to win at least one playoff game um otherwise i think it's a disappointment to everyone to be honest well how long is their window here do you guys, do you agree we're in the browns window right now is this their window absolutely absolutely okay 100 percent. so yep. how how long is that window i think the window well look the window starts to change because the team's going to change drastically over the next three years because they're not going to be able to pay everybody once you have a quarterback on his second contract uh it, it, the, the roster is going to look different he's going to have to carry more of the load draft picks are going to have to produce right away right now you have a roster that you're not going to be able to have in three years 
That's just what it is. You got to re- you got to make a decision on Denzel Ward. You you already re-signed Miles. You're gonna have to decide on you know left tackles make a ton of money. So right now is like the Seattle Seahawks window when they won it with Russ is right now. The the window is now. These next two to three years are it, depending on how they structure Baker's contract and when they re up Denzel and these guys. So so Emmett and the last thing, if if we know the Browns are in their window now, and we have two years, maybe three. Does that change kind of like what they need to do to be a success? Like if we don't have that like luxury of, oh, we'll, we'll play into wins. Like if our windows now, like, hey, Super Bowl or bust, baby. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, for sure. But um, it's really hard to win a Super Bowl. Sure. You know, it's yeah, really yeah. hard to win a Super Bowl. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, but. I believe in Andrew Barry. Uh, yeah. So I think the window will be able to stay open a little bit longer than maybe most think you're going to have to make some tough decisions. You know, maybe Wyatt Teller isn't around, you know, um, God forbid, I would, I, I would hate to see Nick Chubb not be here, um, but that's a possibility. I think mm-hmm. they'll figure it out, you know, um, but it is a possibility. But when you have a guy like Andrew Barry drafting and understanding yes. how, you know, this guy should be ready when this guy must leave. And one of the receivers, you know, Odell or Jarvis, one of those, one of those guys are going to be moved at some point um, just due to the, how much money they make. I just trust in Andrew Barry that, you know, it's not like, Oh, you only got two years and, you got options with Baker too. You can let him get to the end of that fifth year and you can franchise them. So there, I think the window will be open yeah. for at least three years, you know, and then we'll see from there. It's like you do this for a living, bringing it back full circle to, to the front office. Almost. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost. One day when I grow up, hopefully I get to work in sports talk radio. Dude, Emmett, thank <laughs> you so much for your time, man. Hey, real quick, uh, where can we catch you um, all the time? Yeah, um, 8.50 ESPN Cleveland. Um, I'm on Noon to One during the really big shows. RBS next, uh, 3 to 5 uh, on the next level. And then on Saturdays, you can catch me uh, on ESPN Radio hosting primetime. You know, that's usually around 5 to 9. Depending sometimes we have games, they move us around. Yeah, you can use it six days a week somewhere. Well, Emmett, thank you so much for joining the show. That wraps it up for this episode of the Oranges, Orange, and Browns podcast. Thank you all for downloading and listening. Shouts to the Press Play Podcast Network for making this possible. Visit PressPlayPodcast.com for sponsorship info and to see how you, yes, you, can host a show on our network. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Oranges, Oranger. Shouts to our special guest, Emmett Golden. Jeremy, any final thoughts, brother? Hey, just excited to finally get Emmett on. You know, he's one of my favorite guys. Like we've talked about, we've done a million shows. I've been throwing it at him for years. Like, where, why are we not at Emmett on? So just a pleasure to have a guy on that I really respect and a guy that really loves what he does and works hard, worked hard to get where he's at. Just a breath of fresh air. For sure, man, for sure. I uh, love to have him back on, have a little more time because he, he does it all. Browns, uh, uh, Indians, uh, Cavs. Yeah, he does right. It all. I got to jump on this Indians post game call here. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm usually doing something. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, hey, we'll, we'll catch you guys here in a couple weeks. A very special announcement on our podcast coming 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 to you soon. So you guys have a great June, and we'll and we'll talk to you soon. Here we go, brownies. Here we go. Ooh, ooh.